Okay, so once you access your map, this is the top of the document that you'll see. At the top, you'll always see, and I understand that the information is blacked out to keep the student's anonymity, but you'll always see the date at the top, the student's name, your name, and your major. On the right side, you'll have your ID number, your graduation date, which will be unknown until you're a senior and you apply for graduation, as well as your catalog year. The catalog year, in essence, is a contract between you and CSUN that you are agreeing to follow the degree requirements of the catalog year, usually the year that you entered CSUN is your catalog year. Then you'll also see your major again listed here. This student is a Bachelor of Arts major in biology. These two graphs here, the one on the left shows units. Green will always be the units completed. When you plan classes using your map a little later, you'll see that there will be purple uh, bars there showing your planned courses. And finally to the right here is your GPAs. You actually uh, generate three GPAs as an undergrad student here at CSUN. The first is your total GPA, all coursework taken toward the degree. The second GPA will be your CSUN GPA, uh, all coursework taken at CSUN. Your third GPA, which this student hasn't generated one yet, is your upper division major GPA. You'll also notice here that if you click on open all sections, all of the areas of GE and of the major will open. And what you see here is you see examples of courses that will meet each of these general education and lower down major sections. So you can choose from those classes to help you plan your map. So let's get started. We have a student who is a BA bio major here at CSUN. And I usually recommend that students start by planning their chemistry courses first. Before you can enter our general chemistry sequence, 101 and 102, you're required to either take Chemistry 100, which is an intro to chem course, and to get into CSUN's Chem 101, that Chem 100 must be taken at CSUN only, or you have to pass the chemistry placement test to go into 101. For the purposes of this demonstration, we will say that this student is planning to take the intro class. He or she does not want to try the placement test. So, what you'll notice is that Chemistry 100 is located here in the General Education section for Natural Sciences. So we're going to click on Chem 100 and we're now in spring 2014 so we're gonna plan this chemistry 100 for fall 14 so use the drop down menu to choose which semester you want to plan the course in and then you choose plan now uh, to get into chem 101 at CSUN you only have to take the lecture so that's why we've only put in chem 100 three units for the lecture and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down to the major section and we're going to plan the rest of the chemistry courses before we start planning any of the other courses. Okay, so this student is planning to take Chemistry 100 then in fall 2014 and this is uh, the required intro course to get into Chemistry 101. Now if Chem 100 doesn't show up as an option to plan if for any reason you can't find it in the GE Natural Sciences section, you could manually put in Chem 100. Okay. Uh, you can click on any class and then you can change it. So I'm going to change this to Chem 100 just to illustrate the fact that you can manually put in a course number. And now you see the Chem 100 there. But we don't need that. That was just an example to show you how to manually put in a class. So let's take that out. And now let's go down to the bio major section and plan the rest of the chemistry. So after Chem 100, General Chem 1. That's Chem 101. So we're going to plan that for Spring 15 and the 101 lab. 
for spring 15. After Chem 101 comes 102. We're going to put that in. Let's say the student wanted to take that maybe in the summertime. So we'll put Chem 102 for summer of 15. We have to add the lab as well. The next uh, class in the sequence of chemistry is organic chem. Organic chem 1 is chem 333. So we're going to plan that for fall of 15. And the lab. Followed by organic chem 2. And the lab. So now, as you can see, we've planned out the complete chemistry sequence of classes. And what we recommend when using your map is to go one subject at a time so that you can make sure you've completed all the courses in each subject. The next subject that I usually recommend people plan out is their math. Now, in the case of this student, if we scroll up to the top, we can see that this student did complete Math 103. Now, this student happened to be a different major at the time and has changed to biology, so you need to know the sequence for biology majors here at CSUN. Assuming that you are exempt from or have completed any remedial math, the first college-level math class for biology majors is Math 102. Now, since this student has already taken a math class, you don't see Math 102 there as an option to click on and then plan. So what we're going to do is the same thing we showed you for Chem 100. You can theoretically click on any class and then alter that. So we're just going to click here, and we're going to change this to Math 102. And then we want to plan that for Fall of 14. So, now you see that the student has a chem class and a math class. Uh, after Math 102, the next math class in the sequence for BA Bio majors is actually a choice between Math 104 Trigonometry and Math 105 Pre-Calculus. Most students happen to choose the Trigonometry, but it is your choice. So again, because we don't have a Math 104 to click on, we're going to click here and again, we're just going to alter the course to say Math 104. And then we're going to plan that for Spring 15. So now you can see the math sequence planned out. Math 102, after that Math 104. Now, a lab for Math 102 may be required. If you're not sure whether or not you need to take the lab for the math class, we recommend you ask your academic advisor in your major or in your EOP office for your college. So now we've planned out all the chemistries and we've planned out all the math. Uh, the math requirement for the BA Bio is just completion of 102 plus either 104 or 105. And as I said, if you don't want to take 104 trigonometry, you could take 105 pre-calc. So now that math and chemistries are all planned out, now I recommend moving to plan out your biology courses. So we're going to go back down to the core requirements for bio. Now, here's where you have to be careful. It may be appealing to you to add Biology 106 to fall of 2014, but I, I must warn you, the Chemistry 100 has about a 50% failure rate. The Math 102, a little bit less than that. These are very rigorous courses, and we recommend that if, unless you're an extremely strong student, to not add biology to the chem and the math. So what I'm going to recommend is that we add the biology courses after completing the math sequence. So. I'm not going to add the Bio 106 here, and I'm not going to add it here. Instead, I'm going to add the Bio to Fall of 2015. So let's put in the Biology 106, 
with the lab and then following that will be the 107 with the lab. So now you see the entire chem sequence is planned out, the entire math sequence is planned out, and the majors level bio sequence is also planned out. Now at the moment our planner will not allow us to plan out any further. Each semester you can plan your your map out a little bit farther but for now that's about as much as we can do. What you'll notice here is somewhat of a pattern. There are two hardcore chem, bio, or math classes in each semester, with the exception of summer, because I don't know if I would recommend two hardcore classes over the summer. But you'll notice kind of an emerging pattern here, which is definitely something that we recommend to people, is that each semester you have a balance of hard chem, bio, or math courses along with some GE. So the next thing I want to show you is placing in some GE courses. I would recommend that you think of them as something that can save you, can balance you out so that you're not doing all science all the time. So this student has already completed their analytical reading expository writing, but they do need a critical thinking class. Now you can pick any of the classes in this group. We will just plan Chicano Studies 202 and we're going to put that into Fall 14. So now the student has nine units, two hard ones, and one GE. To get to full time we need to put in at least one more general education course. So uh, I see that the student is enrolled in their speech class now so we don't need to plan that. And the natural sciences section will largely be satisfied by taking your bio major courses. So we'll skip over that. Let's look at arts and humanities. Now this student is enrolled in one of the arts and humanities required classes this current semester, but as you can see they do need six units from that list. So we're going to plan a second course to fulfill that. Let's just put in a random class here and we're going to put that into fall of 14. Now you'll see that the student is full time, they have 12 units, and they have a real nice balance of harder classes with general eds. Let's add now a GE to the spring. After putting in this uh, Central American Studies course, their arts and humanities will be satisfied. So we're going to scroll down and look for another GE. Now in social science, also six units are required. This student has taken three and has three in progress, so he or she does not need any more classes for social science. However, the comparative cultural section, which in which six units are required, this student has not taken any courses yet, so let's plan a couple there. So let's again randomly pick a class and we're gonna put that in for spring 15. Now you see the student is at 11 units. Now here is an interesting dilemma because what most students will do is they will add another general education course and that is completely acceptable. However, keep in mind that our math classes do have labs and if a student perhaps doesn't want to add another general education section, they could always add the math lab to get themselves to 12 units instead of taking on a whole nother general education class. But let's say this student does want to take another GE. So again, remembering that we need six units or two classes from comparative cultural, we'll add in another class. I don't know, perhaps this class. So I'm going to put this in also for spring of 15. So now the student has 14 units, and again, notice the nice mix of harder courses with general eds. Okay, now we'll look at the fall, and we have planned two courses from comparative cultural, so let's see if there's any other GEs that this student needs. Here are the upper division general education classes, which hopefully you understand 
can be double counted. So for instance, if we scroll down to Title V, notice there are options for taking 100 level courses, 200 levels, and there's a couple 300s there. If the student takes one of these courses, it will satisfy this requirement, but it will also satisfy the upper division general education requirements. So again, let's go back down and let's plan the History 370 for fall of 15. And now, again, you see the unit, the student would now be full-time, 12 units, and they would have the organic chem with the lab, the bio with the lab, and a GE class. And then finally, students need two Title V classes. The American History is the first one, but there's also a Constitution, State, and Local requirement. Again, there are upper division and lower division options for completing this. So what we're going to do is we'll plan one of the upper division classes and we'll put that in for spring 16. Now what you'll see is we are full-time or very nearly full-time for every semester that we've planned out and that's about as far as we can go, again, because the map only lets you uh, plan out so far. So the next thing that we're going to do is we want to check to see if what we have planned out will satisfy the degree requirements here on the left. So before I submit this plan, I want you to notice many of the red areas that you see. And after the plan is submitted, and comes back, many of these areas are going to turn green. So keep your eye on that. So when you're done planning out as much as you can, you would click on Submit Your Plan. And then you will have to repeatedly click on the Check on Status button until the report is refreshed. Okay, so now you're going to notice a few different things. First of all, you're going to notice up at the top in the graph that contains your units. You'll see that 54 total hours have been planned or units, that the 54 planned units will also go toward the CSUN GPA because they've all been planned here at CSUN. And we've even planned some coursework in the upper division major. So that, the purple areas show your planned hours. Now let's look down at the map and hopefully what you notice straight off is that many of the areas that were red are now green. And if you notice there's a blue check mark here with a calendar. What that means is courses have been planned in that section and whatever courses have been planned will satisfy that area of the degree requirements. All right, now here's the critical thinking. So first of all, you'll notice it says PC here. PC means planned course. You'll see the units, the course number, and then you'll see the semester in which that work has been planned. And the plus here with the PL next to it means this will satisfy the degree requirement and it's been planned out, okay? Now, we scroll down here and what we notice is there's the chemistry 100, the planned course, and like I mentioned, your general ed natural sciences are requirement is often satisfied by biology major courses, which is why you notice the chem labs up here are satisfying the lab requirement for natural sciences. Your arts, the arts and humanities GE requirement is now completed with the planned course. The comparative cultural section is now complete with the planned courses. We have planned two out of the three required upper division general education classes. And as you can see, the Title V American History and Government is now completed and planned. Let's take a quick look down at the bio core. As you see, all of these courses are now planned. Now, uh, in the future, as 
you've been here longer and you move into sophomore, junior, senior range, you'll have enough semesters on the right to plan out the remainder of the coursework for the major. And then before we wrap it up, there's just one more thing that I want to briefly go over, and that is at the very bottom, you'll see kind of a summary of all unit and GPA requirements. You'll always see the number of units you've earned, how many you have in process or in progress for the current semester, how many you've planned out, and then if you haven't planned enough to complete the degree, you'll get a number of how many more units you need. Uh, there are then a number of other requirements to get the degree. For instance, in the BA Biology, you have to have 40 upper division units. You will get a note there of how many you've earned, how many you've planned, and how many are remaining. Uh, there's a number of units that you must take in residence here at CSUN, a number of upper division units in residence, a number of residence units in the major, and a number of resident units in general education. And then finally at the very bottom, you'll see the three GPAs, all coursework taken at CSUN, all coursework toward the degree, and if you've entered into your upper division coursework in the major, which the student hasn't, which is why it's at zero, you would see your number of units and GPA in your upper division major coursework. So that's a quick tour of the map and planning out some classes. We really urge you to utilize this piece of software. It's always easier for advisors to assist you when you come in with some kind of plan, even if you're not sure about it or you need help fixing it up. <music>